Tuesday, September 11, 2012. Dozens of heavily armed gunmen storm a U.S. consulate in Benghazi, overwhelming the compound and sending shockwaves to Washington until a group of former special operators turned CIA contractors, defied orders to stand down, and responded on foot from a nearby CIA annex, racing directly into the firefight to rescue the Americans trapped within. And with little to no reinforcements or air support, the six contractors would rise against all odds to protect their countrymen from wave after wave of attackers during a hellish 13-hour firefight. In 1979, following the withdrawal of a U.S. ambassador, 2,000 Libyan protesters attempted to burn down the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli over allegations of the United States' involvement in the Grand Mosque seizure in Mecca, leading to then-President Jimmy Carter shutting down the embassy altogether. And by the early 2000s, efforts were made to normalize relations once again, as the country of Libya strongly supported U.S. intervention in the ongoing civil war between Gaddafi loyalists and rebel militias. And by 2011, California native and U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stevens was handpicked by then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to be Special Envoy to the Libyan Transitional National Council, fighting Gaddafi as discussions were already underway in D.C. As Hillary Clinton's objective was to test the waters and seek permanent placement of a U.S. Embassy in Libya. And by April 5th, Stevens arrived in Benghazi to personally assess the security and political situation. Stevens remained in Benghazi as a special representative to the TNC for more than six months and witnessed both the dictatorship of Gaddafi topple and the reopening of the U.S. Embassy in neighboring Tripoli. And following the death of Gaddafi, the U.S. sought to further their relations by placing Stevens as the U.S. liaison with insurgent groups that Washington hoped would be part of the post-Gaddafi government. But the region only grew violent, and many factions began to form in the wake of an inter-civil war conflict. Gaddafi's stockpiles had been raided, and weapons were everywhere. And terror groups such as Al-Sharia and Al-Qaeda took full advantage of the chaos. And it wasn't long until Stevens would endure his first terror attack, when a car bomb was strategically detonated directly out front of his hotel. He was escorted by a security team to a nearby CIA annex located on a 13-acre compound, and he would return stateside soon after, as terrorism continued to sweep through Benghazi, most notably a detonation of the United States unofficial consulate in Benghazi. All Sharia claimed responsibility for the attack, including the failed assassination attempt on a British ambassador and a failed attempt to burn down a Tunisian consulate. Libyan officials would warn the U.S. government by September 8th of 2012 to decrease American presence in their country due to fears of the ongoing terrorism. But despite Benghazi becoming a ticking time bomb, Stevens would be sent to Benghazi once again, only three days following that warning on September 10th. Due to the consulate being a temporary diplomatic outpost, not an official embassy containing classified documents, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton deemed additional security unnecessary, leaving Stevens and the rest of the Americans sitting ducks, as the consulate inconveniently neighbored an al-Sharia stronghold, and Stevens' requests for increased security were continuously denied. Meanwhile in Tripoli, former Navy SEAL turned CIA contractor Glenn Doherty contacted his fellow CIA Global Response Staff contractors stationed at the annex in Benghazi, alerting the team to be on full alert while the ambassador is in town. The GRS team consisted of former Navy SEAL Jack Silva, Marine Sergeant turned contractor John Teague, AKA TIG, former Army Ranger Chris Peronto, AKA Tonto, Marine turned contractor Dave Benton, AKA Boone, former Navy SEAL Tyrone Woods, AKA Roan, and Marine turned contractor Mark Geist, AKA Oz. The team stood at the ready to assist the ambassador in the event of an attack. 
and by the end of Ambassador Stevens' first day, at around 8.30 p.m., he would conclude a meeting with a Turkish diplomat and return to his room by 9 p.m. But by 9.40, dozens upon dozens of armed men rushed the consulate from all directions. Security service agent Alec Henderson, monitoring the security cameras within, alerts the ambassador. And as the attackers toss grenades over the security walls, they enter the compound with AK-47s, RPGs, and heavy artillery. Henderson quickly sends an alert to the CIA annex, which pings to the nearby embassy in Tripoli and the State Department in Washington. The nearby GRS team immediately load out, but are frustratingly told to stand down. Ambassador Stevens, Information Management Officer Sean Smith, and Security Agent Henderson enter a safe room and attempt to phone for help. The heavy metal bars keep the attackers at bay, but the gunmen set fire to the console with diesel fuel, and all help breaks loose. Using his cell phone, Stevens called Deputy Mission Chief Gregory Hicks at the embassy to call for help, begging him to send the contractors from the annex. He said, Greg, we're under attack. The operators standing by at the annex are repeatedly told to stand down, and by 10 p.m., Henderson sends his final plea for help to the CIA annex, stating if they don't arrive soon, everyone inside is likely to die. Upon hearing this, GRS member Tyrone Woods decides to enact a rescue mission without higher approval. He gathers his men and a Libyan interpreter, and together the men defy orders and respond to the consulate. By 10.10 p.m., the team reaches a roadblock staffed with armed Libyans. Too risky to drive through, the team split in two. Tonto and Boone move forward with an armed group of locals, while Roan, Silva, and Tig take the middle of the street. Meanwhile, inside the consulate, security agent Wicklin moves Stevens and Smith into a bathroom before exiting out of a window to return fire. Unable to see through the smoke, he climbs to the rooftop and gets a look at the onslaught below. The entire compound is burning, and there are terrorists all around it, with no support in sight, until Tig fires a grenade launcher into the courtyard, and Tonto opens fire without cover. They hold off the attack long enough for Boone and two security guards to search for Stevens and Smith, but the smoke from the fire overwhelms Stevens and Smith, and the two become radio silent. But Boone locates Smith and informs Tonto that he's been killed. By 11.10 p.m., a Delta Predator drone flies over the compound, sending live footage of the attack to the Pentagon and White House, where Secretary of State Hillary Clinton needed to make a critical decision to send in reinforcements. Meanwhile in Tripoli, desperate to get to Benghazi to help his friends, Glenn Doherty bribes a commercial airline pilot with $30,000 and makes his way to Benghazi. By 11.30 p.m., the GRS team successfully smoked the majority of the combatants who breached the gates and successfully collected five survivors within. But the victory was cut short by yet another wave of incoming attackers. And by 12.07 a.m., 6.07 p.m. Washington time, the State Department sends an email to the White House stating the terrorist group Al-Sharia and Al-Qaeda have claimed credit for the attack and Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Martin Dempsey meet with President Obama. By 12.30 a.m., the GRS team extract the survivors and flee what has now become a spectacle as they move through block parties, riots, and rogue combatants within the city streets. By 1.15 a.m., Glenn Doherty arrives with a rescue team from Tripoli and races to the annex. But during the firefight, Doherty loses Roan's position and moves toward the rooftop to locate him. As he found Roan, a mortar struck Roan's position, fatally wounding him. And as Doherty attempted to reposition, a second mortar round fell, killing him. Over the next two hours, short lulls would occur, but the attacks would continue 
until sunrise. Recognizing the need for immediate action and the lack of reinforcements, the GRS team unanimously agreed to evacuate to the airport, saving 30 Americans, including six State Department personnel and the remains of Sean Smith. All diplomatic staff were moved to the capital of Tripoli. All non-essential personnel were flown stateside. Sensitive documents remain missing, including documents listing the names of Libyans working with Americans and documents relating to oil contracts. 18 hours after the attack, Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawari released a video to coincide with the anniversary of 9-11, which called for attacks on Americans in Libya in order to avenge drone strikes in Pakistan. Ambassador Stevens was located within the consulate by a group of Libyans. He was transported to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. for the country they chose to serve, and the American people lost the truth. For all of this loss, for all of this grief, for all of the cynicism, the tragedy in Benghazi has brought upon America, I blame Hillary Clinton. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more mini documentaries in the works and you don't want to miss them. So make sure you're subscribed and be sure to check me out over on Instagram as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.